Uh, if you've ever wanted to use your technical skills to help others and your community as part of the Humans in IT session, uh, this next half hour, we're going to focus on GiveDamp, uh, an opportunity for, for you to give back through code. Um, hello and welcome. I'm Jay Harris, president of GiveCamp, uh, and here with my co-presenter, uh, my predecessor and one of GiveCamp's founders, uh, Chris Koenig. Uh, over this uh, time, we're going to go over uh, what, what exactly is GiveCamp. We're going to go over its origin story. How did GiveCamp all start? Uh, what can you do uh, to participate in a GiveCamp event? And if you're so inclined to organize, of course, um, closing out with uh, a list of the upcoming uh, upcoming uh, GiveCamp events throughout the rest of the calendar year and beyond. So what is GiveCamp? Uh, GiveCamp is it's a coding for charity hackathon, um, building custom software for nonprofits. Uh, typically, GiveCamp is a weekend long event uh, pairing together local volunteer challenges with small local nonprofits to provide a boost to those nonprofits in, in their of our local communities. Um, it's, a, it's a coding for charity hackathon that is a, it's, it's an opportunity to give the same nonprofit organizations that serve us uh, and do so much for our own communities. Uh, most of the, the nonprofits uh, assisted by GiveCamp are small and have a very limited budget. So, for example, the, the local animal shelter, what limited funding they have is allocated to dog food and cat litter and not to, to, to industry IT professionals that can uh, help them build uh, a new professional polished website. Uh, often they Give camp uh, ones are still operated even from the founder's kitchen table, um, and uh, the business is managed in, in general purpose documents and spreadsheets, and not in something fancy like a customer relationship management suite. Tools, specialized tools that we all take for granted uh, in day-to-day uh, -day business. And further, uh, those uh, small nonprofits also lack the technical skills and the technical expertise to implement uh, such systems and platforms. So that's where we come in. Uh, GiveCamp's volunteers, uh, they include developers, uh, designers, database administrators, project managers, quality analysts, uh, business specialists, social media experts, copywriters, all sorts of roles that you can think of uh, that are a part of a normal uh, business software project or a part of, Gil of, part of GiveCamp. Um, at all skill levels, uh, all age groups, from experts to beginners, from retirees through grade school students, all working together to, to complete uh, a project for a local nonprofit in need. Um, maybe it's a, a custom website built in WordPress. Maybe it's a custom configuration within Salesforce. Uh, maybe the project is a custom application built from scratch in ASP.NET Core, or working with a nonprofit uh, to get the organization set up on uh, Microsoft for nonprofits. Uh, hosting their website on, on on donated Azure service credits to reduce their overhead costs of not having to pay some other hosting provider. Whatever it may be, um, through GiveCamp, local technologists uh, can, can team up, uh, satisfy all of those roles necessary to effectively deliver a software project uh, and provide a, a much needed, very valuable boost to our local nonprofits that already have limited time limited budget um, and limited support. Um, and all of it's done in a single weekend. Uh, to date, so far, there have been over 160 events uh, in over 30 cities worldwide, Give camp events. Uh, and though we don't have any exact figures, uh, we do know that the, the time donated by Give camp volunteers has exceeded well over $15 million US of equivalent hourly value if those nonprofits were to go in and pay for the services uh, from normal uh, commercial street value. Um, so over these past 14 years, uh, Give Camps events have assisted roughly a thousand uh, nonprofit organizations, and we love to showcase those organizations. We love to to tell their stories, uh, but this story is about Give Camp uh, itself. By the time uh, I became involved uh, in Give Camp. Uh, as an organizer, it was 2009, and the GiveCamp idea was already well on its way. Uh, on the other hand, uh, Chris, Chris Koenig, 
Uh, he's one of the founders of GiveCamp and 14 years ago was one of the founders of the idea of GiveCamp. Uh, so I could certainly relay the story of, of, of how it all began, but I'm a, I'm a firm believer that if you want the true origin story, uh, it's best to just go to the source. So I hand it over to Chris for exactly that. Thanks, Jay. Um, the origin story goes back to 2007 when um, some of my peers and I uh, in the what we used to call DPE or, or developer evangelism team talking about what kind of ideas we had about different kind of programs that we wanted to run in the coming fiscal year. And uh, there were a lot of crazy ideas generated that year. There were some great ideas generated that year. I had uh, earlier in the summer participated in a Habitat for Humanity house, and I thought, well, maybe it'd be fun to try to get all the local user groups uh, to participate in a, in a Habitat for Humanity. And I remembered my experience trying to figure out how to, you know, tape and float a wall or, or hang shingles, and I thought, I don't know if that if that works. It's too bad there's not a way for us to leverage their passion for development. Um, why don't we why don't we figure out a way to leverage that and have them do something for the local community? Um, and one of the guys I was working with, he goes, oh, maybe if you get everybody together in a room, you guys can figure out how to how to cure cancer or cure some crazy disease. And I thought, well, that's kind of funny. I, I doubt we could do that, but maybe we could help the people who help the people deal with cancer. And that eventually turned into an idea of helping local nonprofits. And certainly back in those times, there wasn't a lot of um, self-developed uh, web presences or, or online marketing that was accessible to nonprofits like this, right? As Jay mentioned, we weren't going after the United Way, we were going after animal shelters and uh, you know food drive, local food drive places. So we thought, well, maybe we can get people to build some kind of online presence for them. And so, um, you know, we, the Microsoft community, let's let's figure out how to do that. Well, later that year, I was at a um, I was at a conference that was run by one of our uh, one of our local user group leaders. And there were several of us sitting around after it was over talking about things. And I said, hey, I have these two crazy ideas I wanted to float by you. I don't even remember the first one. That's probably because it was probably not a very good idea. Um, but I mentioned this idea about coding for charity. And um, one of the uh, local Dallas user group leaders, Toy Wright, who runs the uh, Dallas ASP.net user group, um, she was very interested in this. And I said, I don't have a, a structure, a plan or anything. I just have this idea. Um, would you be willing to work with me to help me figure out what what something like this might look like. So she took it, uh, took that idea and sort of invented what became known as the um, We Are Microsoft Charity Challenge Weekend. And it ran from a Friday afternoon to a Sunday evening. Um, and it was filled with a ton of volunteers and a, and a ton of very interested uh, and eager charities. Um, and we spent that weekend you know, not only having a lot of fun doing it, but trying to figure out and, you know, how are we going to be able to leverage this model? What did we learn? What did we not learn? Um, Toy ran several of these over the years, um, but we all realized after the, you know, the first event or two that this, this is something that was really exciting. It was fun to do. It was very motivating in the local community. It was helping, you know, grow more participation between people. And so um, I was discussing the results of all of this with my manager. I think two of them had run by this point. And he said, man, this is bigger than just one thing. You should, you should see if you, how big you can take this. You should see how big this can go. And so with the help of folks like Jay and other, other, uh, other guys, um, Kansas City and uh, Nashville and some other places, we rebranded that um, We Are Microsoft event to GiveCamp as a more kind of general purpose name, um, we you know, hired, uh, uh, hired somebody to build us a logo. Um, we didn't have much budget, so uh, we didn't have a very fancy logo, but we started there really. 
And it's because of the local communities, the local user group leaders like Toy, um, like Jay, like uh, Jennifer Marsman, um, uh, like the guys in Kansas City who really help this thing take off, right? One gut idea is, is, is great, but if nobody ever hears about it or nobody ever takes action on it, you don't really go anywhere. Well, these guys took it and ran with it to the point, I mean, Jay mentioned there, how many how many people, how many different events, how many millions of dollars we've saved. Um, it's, it's, been a, it's been a humbling and fun experience um, to participate in this. And I'm, and I'm glad that, uh, that it's still going on and there's still people who are super passionate about doing it. Uh, and I'm glad it's still benefiting um, underserved local area charities. So that's the origin story. That's where it comes from. And now it's turned into this huge, amazing thing, thanks to folks like Jay and, and Toy and Jennifer and all of them. So, you know, I'll let him take it from here. Thank you, Chris. It's a, it, it's a great idea, and I, I certainly love being a part of it. I think in total, uh, I, I've participated in a little over a dozen give camps at this point uh, in various cities. I want to go to the mall. I want to someday make it to one down in Dallas or one in Seattle. I, uh, I hope I can someday, especially in the uh, in, in the post COVID times, once things open all back up again. So, so thanks for the story, Chris. Uh, thanks for how it, it all uh, it all got started. I think that's a, an important element of 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 Give Camp itself. But um, certainly, I, I want to make sure that every everybody has. Uh, a good understanding of of what they were get, getting into if they go to participate in a give camp. I mean, it's it's a hackathon, but it's different. Um, so, so what is this all like? What is uh, what is a typical uh, give camp uh, look like? Well, a typical give camp can be of any size. Um, we've had successful give camp events ranging from, from a uh, a handful of developers to several hundred volunteers. Um, the volunteers that participate will be organized into groups, into project teams uh, for implementing a, a specific need, a specific project for uh, a nonprofit, whether it's building out a WordPress website or Salesforce or a custom app or something else. The volunteers are assigned to one specific project for the weekend. Uh, the project can be anything really it's not limited to WordPress and custom apps and Salesforce. They can be anything. Uh, they just need to follow one uh, one universal rule. Uh, the project scope must be completed in a weekend. Anything at all, as long as it can be completed in a weekend. Now, now this requirement uh, does meander into a few uh, practices and clarifications. Uh, so first uh, is 100% complete. The project scope must be completed. This doesn't mean mostly done or kind of done or almost done. This means done, done, fully complete, uh, polished, published, ready to go. Uh, using, a, using a website as an example, many of our participating nonprofits, they already have a website, uh, but it lacks that professional's touch. It lacks the professional's polish. Uh, maybe it was um, built by the founder that doesn't have uh, any tech savvy. They just found a, a build your own website website or read a book on it and gave it a shot because they don't have the funding to hire um, a, a professional. So we at Give Camp view mostly a mostly complete complete project is giving them exactly what they already have. It's mostly there. It does the basics, but it lacks that professional polish. So we certainly uh, want to go beyond the mostly complete into absolutely complete. Uh, to help achieve that, uh, we also like to group together the project scope into let's say three different categories. Uh, sort of uh, roughly defined as need, want, and cool. So what do you need to have? What do you want to have? And what would be cool if, it, if this thing could also do? Uh, it gives us a, a prioritization to help uh, make sure that the necessities are completed and polished, uh, those, those need to haves, uh, but while still giving additional features and capabilities to implement uh, if the project team has uh, left over time. Um, so, with GiveCamp being a hackathon, it's often compared to other hackathons, but uh, most hackathons exist 
uh, for learning a new platform, learning a new language, a new technology. Um, that And that journey of learning uh, is more important than the goal. Uh, if you don't complete the sample ha hackathon project during the hackathon, it's not really a big deal. It's not really a concern because you've already learned a lot, regardless of if you finished or not. However, with GiveCamp, this is not the case. We need completion. Um, so though you will still learn a lot at a give camp, the priority is more on the doing, on giving back than it is on the learning. The focus is on, it's on improving others, not on improving ourselves. Now this does tend to mean that some of the projects can be a little bit easier. Um, that's not to say that they're all basic and boring, but that's just that uh, easy in more of a sense of effortless. Uh, something that you already know how to do with that compressed timeline of finishing this project scope in a weekend. Um, we want to make sure that it's something that sort of you can proverbially do in your sleep. Uh, a good comparison uh, that I like to use is my, my grandparents' clock. Uh, they have a VCR. Uh, they still have a VCR. Long as, as the days of DVDs have come and seem to have gone and everything is all streaming through Netflix, they still have a VCR and all of their favorite movies are on video cassette. But it seems that every time I go over to my grandparents' house, that stupid clock on the front of the VCR is just blinking 12, blink, blink, forever, endlessly, an endless monotony of blinking that annoys everybody, especially my grandparents. Now, for, for many of us, Programming the VCR on the clock so it stops blinking, it's its pretty effortless. Even if we don't know how to do it, we can figure out what buttons to push to set the clock in a few seconds. And yet, uh, my grandparents are, are very appreciative of that effort every single time. Um, so that's sort of a good parallel to give camp projects. Sometimes they are more on the easier side, but that doesn't mean that the, that the participating nonprofits aren't immensely um, grateful uh, of the effort. Sometimes there's not even a tremendous amount of code involved in a GiveCamp project. Um, that, that WordPress site may involve purchasing an off-the-shelf theme uh, and the coding effort would just be building out a child theme with some minor customizations to, uh, to presentation and to functionality. Just making that VCR clock not blink. Focusing on improving life for others, not on ourselves. Using, uh, using our talents that we already have to give back to the community. Now I find that that is also um, a question, those talents that we use to give back. Uh, I regularly get asked, Jay, I'm not some super awesome ninja 10x rock star software developer where fire comes out of my fingertips as I code at warp speed. Can I contribute? Would my help be valuable? And the answer is absolutely. Um, designers and developers, database administrators, project managers, um, social media experts, copywriters, all of the roles associated with a normal uh, software development project are valuable regardless of skill set. All skill levels, all age groups, experts to beginners, uh, retirees to grade school are valuable and can contribute at, uh, at a give camp to a give camp project. Um, a, a good friend of mine is uh, David Giard. Uh, he lives in Chicago. He works for, for Microsoft as a, as a senior software engineer. Uh, I've known uh, David for 15 years now. Um, but, well, for this story, he's not the hero of the story. Uh, the hero of this story is his son, Tim. Um, back in the spring of 2009 at the first Lansing Give Camp uh, in Lansing, Michigan, um, uh, Dave and Tim were both members of a, of a five-person uh, Give Camp project team. Uh, an effort for the Ronald McDonald House of mid-Michigan. Uh, Tim was 14. Uh, it was a great event, sort of an odd event because I mean there was even time during the event where a big rainstorm came through and knocked the power out. Uh, the venue lost power. Fortunately, nearly everybody participating in Give Camp is working off a personal laptop, which have batteries. So Give Camp just kept on going, uh, lit by the glow of a hundred laptop monitor screens. Um, Tim, uh, at 14, uh, he was the youngest participant that year and, and a valuable contributor to the project. Um, a few years later, uh, fall of 2012, was uh, I was one of the organizers for, at the time it was the, the fifth annual Ann Arbor Give Camp uh, in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Uh, Dennis Burton, uh, he's a former Microsoft MVP uh, in Azure, Microsoft Azure. He participated with his son, Drew, 
uh, working on a, a project for a nonprofit called the Pink Fund. Uh, um, Drew participated throughout the event, um, and at the end of the weekend uh, for the closing ceremonies where they showcased the, the project's work, uh, Drew was the lead presenter, uh, presenting to all of the Give Camp uh, attendants um, on, on what they built for the Pink Fund. Drew was nine. Um, he's just beginning the fourth grade. Uh, he wasn't he wasn't some little kid that came along to read a book or or color while his dad you know from the sidelines while his dad did some work. Uh, Drew was a, a very uh, active and valued contributor to the project. So uh, Tim was fourteen. Drew was nine. Any skill level from beginners to expert, uh, any age. Um, and from implementation all the way through marketing, any role uh, is is certainly uh, valued at 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 a give at give camp events. Um, so, what does that weekend look like? Um, well, typically a give camp event begins on a Friday afternoon. Uh, volunteers and nonprofit representatives arrive. Uh, they sign in uh, in preparation for the opening ceremonies of the event. Um, uh, a Give Camp event will have several nonprofits participating at a Give Camp event, and though you uh, may only be working with one of them uh, throughout the weekend, we still want everyone in attendance to know them all. So, at the opening ceremonies, uh, it's a it's an opportunity to get to know the nonprofits, giving them each an opportunity to introduce themselves, to uh, talk about what they do, uh, and talk about what brings them to Give Camp. Uh, after the opening ceremonies, uh, the, uh, everybody breaks into uh, teams uh, and gets to work uh, on, on the projects. Um, fuel is provided throughout the weekend, meals, drinks, snacks, all provided by the, as a part of the event. Um, as, as organizers, we view our job as essentially setting the table, um, inviting people to it, supplying, supplying everything that everyone needs to make the magic happen, and then just getting out of the way. Um, there are uh, regular stand-up meetings throughout the weekend, um, perhaps every few hours. Uh, it allows teams uh, an opportunity to provide a status update, um, provide uh, to voice any uh, concerns that they have, any roadblocks they have encountered, uh, which is great since it's a it's a in that group setting. Uh, Usually, if someone encounters a roadblock, someone else in the event has already encountered it. So giving them through stand up that opportunity to voice, hey, I'm struggling with this thing. Someone else on a different team can say, hey, we just encountered that, but we know how to fix it. So let's catch up after stand up is over. And then, of course, stand up is a is an opportunity for uh, for everyone to, to move around, to take a break from staring at the keyboard and and scream. Um, if you've uh, if you've ever met Josh Holmes, Josh is a he's a principal software engineer lead for Microsoft. Um, if if you've ever met Josh Holmes, you know his his deep booming, absolutely booming voice. Uh, he was one of the original organizers for Ann Arbor's uh, Give Camp. Uh, back then, he was an evangelist uh, for Microsoft, uh, and Josh would lead stand up. Uh, the business education building at, at Washtenaw Community College, where Ann Arbor Give Camp is held every year. Uh, the center core of this building is this giant atrium, this giant uh, two-story glass atrium, and it was perfect acoustics for Josh. Uh, that that booming voice of his would bounce off of the, that glass dome and echo throughout the building, and everyone knew it was time for stand-up. Uh, Josh, he now leads the, the stand-ups for Seattle, Seattle's Give Camp, um, and has brought that practice with him, uh, but they certainly still carry on, carry it on uh, at Ann Arbor Gip Camp as well. Um, so throughout the weekend with uh, plenty of, of food, uh, snacks, drinks, fuel, the occasional stand up, uh, the teams work throughout the weekend to complete the project. Um, on Sunday or on lunchtime, uh, everything is completed and polished. Like all of the other meals uh, throughout uh, the event since the opening, lunch is provided. Uh, followed by uh, the event's closing ceremonies. Those opening ceremonies were focused on the nonprofits, what they do and what brought them to Give Camp. The closing ceremonies are focused on the project teams. Uh, it's, a, it's an opportunity to showcase what they accomplished during the weekend, um, often before and after pictures, 
uh, plenty of oohs and eyes and, and and certainly a, a few tears of, of joy uh, and gratitude for all of the all of the giving back all that was a complete that was completed uh, during during the weekend. Uh, so where are these give camps? Well, uh, Ann Arbor and Dallas were some of the first. Uh, I believe Cleveland uh, still uh, has the accolades for being the largest uh, year after year, uh, but there are many uh, cities that hold regular uh, annual events. Most of them are, are in the U.S. Uh, so from uh, east to west across the U.S., the regulars, um, there's uh, New England Give Camp, which is in Waterford, Massachusetts, uh, a little bit outside of Boston. Uh, there's Pittsburgh Give Camp, uh, Cleveland, Ann Arbor. Uh, there's Southwest Ohio Give Camp, which is held outside of Cincinnati. Uh, there's Give Camp Memphis in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, Give Camp Northwest Arkansas, uh, which is usually held in, in Rogers, Arkansas. Uh, Dallas Give Camp. Uh, Arizona Give Camp uh, in Phoenix uh, uh, and Seattle. But these are the regular annual events. Uh, some cities hold intermittent events, uh, perhaps one every one every few years. Uh, though it's not an annual event, Lansing Give Camp in Lansing, Michigan has hosted six over the, uh, the past 12 years. And there's others, uh, New York City, Indianapolis, Austin, uh, Vegas, uh, and internationally, there's been Give Camps in uh, London and Berlin. Um, most of the give camps were in-person events prior to uh, COVID-19. Um, uh, Arizona give camp was the last one before uh, the global pandemic began to take hold. That was uh, early of 2020. Uh, Ann Arbor, Cleveland, Dallas, and a few others were canceled last year, but some events. Um, uh, Phoenix held uh, a mini event uh, last uh, last year. So did uh, Northwest Arkansas had a, had a mini give camp a virtual event. Uh, Southwest Ohio and Cincinnati held the first virtual full give camp uh, in October last year. Uh, they had 25 volunteers for six area nonprofits. Seattle hosted one in October as well uh, with seven more nonprofits. Uh, Pittsburgh was virtually this past November. Uh, Memphis in this past February, New England Give Camp held a virtual Give Camp just a few weeks ago, uh, April 30th through May 2nd. There are um, a few uh, more that are coming up. Uh, some of them have their dates locked down. Some of them are still tentative. Uh, we have uh, Cleveland, with they're hoping for, for an in-person event to be held uh, September 10th through 12th uh, this year. Uh, Seattle will be holding a virtual event October 22nd through the 24th. Um, Memphis, uh, they've already had their 2021 events, so they're on the docket for February 25th through the 27th of next year, 2022. Uh, but Southwest Ohio and Cincinnati, uh, Dallas and uh, Northwest Arkansas all have uh, tentative dates for around October of, uh, of this fall. Um, Certainly, uh, if you wish, you can organize uh, your own. Uh, the best way to do that is to go to the website, givecamp.org. On there is an entire section for, uh, for um, getting started, uh, for organizing your own event. Uh, includes a full cookbook uh, for the recipes of, uh, of building a Give Camp. Certainly, it's, it could seem that organizing a Give Camp can be overwhelming, but with over 160 events under our belt, we've we've gotten pretty good at it uh, and know what to expect. Uh, so uh, givecamp.org includes a full cookbook that can not only give you some perspective timelines, but help you with a lot of ideas around finding sponsors, finding venues, uh, finding uh, recruiting nonprofits to participate uh, in your organization. And of course, you can always reach out to us at any time. Feel free to email me personally uh, at president at givecamp.org. Uh, or contact uh, the uh, Give Camp through the website at givecamp.org. And of course, hitting up us up on social media, uh, things like twitter.com slash givecamp. Um, and we're more than happy. We encourage um, uh, questions about volunteering or in organizing your own event. Um, so um, upcoming events, again, uh, we have uh, Cleveland Give Camp uh, will be September 10th through 12th. Uh, the Give Camp will be October 22nd through the 24th of this year. Uh, Memphis next February. Uh, Cincinnati, Dallas, and Northwest Arkansas events are in their planning stages for October. And I'm sure 
Uh, it's May, uh, so the uh, third and fourth quarter events for this year are still working through uh, their planning stages, so more will pop up as throughout the next uh, couple of weeks. Uh, and I encourage you uh, to, to check them out. Um, it's, a, uh, it's a great event. Um, it's a great opportunity to give back. Uh, and I certainly encourage uh, everyone to, uh, to give it a shot. Um, uh, yeah, givecamp.org and uh, give camp on most all of the social medias and i hope to see you at a at a give camp soon thank you